I wanted to kind of go back to atheist content for a minute. Um, because uh, Genetically Modified Skeptic um, made a video that was like based on uh, JJ, I cannot say his last name, I'm sorry, the Canadian guy, um, based on one of his videos about like the eight types of American atheists. Um, and I loved that video, but I thought that it was leaving out a fundamental, very different experience. Um, and one of the top comments actually said that, um, which is people who grew up irreligious. Now, that's not shade to Drew at all. He had a whole little intro being like, I'm sure there are plenty more, but I just can't make a video with all of them. Um, but it made me think about how fundamentally different um, my experience growing up irreligious, especially um, in Texas, I live in the same city as Drew, um, how growing up in a conservative, very religious place as an atheist as a kid, just like gives it a completely different perspective in some ways that's good in some ways that I think is unhelpful to the discussion, like my ability to discuss it. But nonetheless, uh, I think it's worth talking about. So I guess this video is just like, I'm going to talk about like specific formative experiences I had that I think are only things that kids who grew up irreligious will experience, or maybe even kids in minority religions too, it probably depends. But I don't know, just how, how that experience shaped how I look at religion and how it is probably part of the reason I'm an anti-theist. So let's just get into it. Enough intro. So to start out this video, I want to say I didn't necessarily grow up atheist. I mean, I did in the sense that atheist just means lack of belief in God. But I was, I grew up like in what I think realistically could probably be the most neutral religious environment. Um, I think the only thing that could have been more neutral about it is if we moved from Texas to like Norway or Canada, even somewhere, somewhere that um, is not as open about their religion as in not the Bible Belt. Um, but in terms of my own actual upbringing, uh, disregarding the setting, which will be important later, but for now. I think I had a very neutral upbringing. I literally did not know what religion was until I was eight, which I will talk about more later. Um, I think I've talked about that before because it's a very weird experience to me that a lot of people don't share that I think is interesting, but we'll get into that. Um, my parents also were not opposed to me being religious either. My brother, um, who obviously grew up in the same environment as me and is only three years younger than me, um, is now a Buddhist, and my parents don't give a shit, and, you know, I'm an atheist YouTuber, and my parents also don't give a shit. Um, and for the background going forward, my mom is native and grew up on the res, um, until she was in about high school, I think. And my grandma was spiritual, but not really religious. She didn't grow up religious. And my dad is an ex-fundy, uh, his side of the family is Nazarenes. I'm not sure if Nazarenes are always fundies, or if, like, just this little church, uh, is, but nonetheless, he is very much an ex-fundy. And now, obviously, both of them are atheists. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about this because I think someone like myself who grew up um, in a pretty much completely neutral environment to religion, like, was not exposed to it in my own household at all until I brought it up. Um, and even then was really just told, hey, uh, yeah, I agree, it is kind of stupid, but please don't tell people that, uh, don't cause problems. <laughs> like, I think that gives a really different perspective uh, than ex-religious people. And... I, I recorded this before, and I literally said this so many times that it added, like, an extra three minutes to the video, so I just am re-recording. So I'm gonna say this once or twice, but please keep it in mind through the whole video. I am not saying that my perspective is better or more educated or in any way superior to that of ex-religious people. In fact, I actually think ex-religious people should be, be the center of the conversation, and people like myself should serve as something of a mediator because ultimately, ex-religious people um, are the people that are harmed by religion. So while at times in this video I may say I have a more balanced or neutral take on it, that doesn't mean that that's a better take, and it doesn't mean that it's more balanced in every area. It just means, like, the part I'm talking about. So I just want to clarify, like, I am not trying to say that ex-religious people have any less of a valid take. If anything, I think their take is more valid. It's just different. But moving on from the little disclaimer... Um, I guess I wanted to start off with, like, a few personal anecdotes, which is usually something I don't do, but considering that this entire video is about experience, I think that that's fair. Um, just for, like, experiences that don't get represented a lot um, in atheist spaces, because a lot of uh, atheist YouTubers are ex-religious people, which absolutely makes sense, because they have more invested in the topic and more personal experience with it. 
Um, but I don't really see a lot of atheist YouTubers who grew up atheist, so I never see these experiences represented uh, in atheist content. And I think it's important to talk about them because while these were not necessarily negative or positive experiences, they were definitely formative ones. And they fundamentally are a major reason of why I am the kind of atheist that I am. So I guess like one thing I've talked about this a million times I talked about it at the beginning of the video, but it's definitely a weird experience. Um, whenever I was around eight, I had a friend who was Christian. Now, I did not know that people were religious. I had like no fucking idea. You know, now that I'm monetized, I probably shouldn't say fuck that early in the video, but whatever, it's too late now. Um, but I thought that church uh, and the Bible and things like that were how I would go to figure skating after school, right? Um, and just like I went to figure skating a few times a week, they would go to church. I basically saw it as an extracurricular activity that was done purely for fun because you want to and not because of some greater supposed purpose or because they actually believed in God. Like the book part of it to me was like, I like warrior cats and they like the Bible. Or like the going to church part was like, I go to figure skating and they go to church. <laughs> I did not see it as anything serious or integral to their life any more than I saw me drawing or skating as integral to my life. Like, I thought they enjoyed it, but it wasn't that deep. Um, until I went to church with a friend of mine. Um, I do not remember what led up to us going to church other than I slept over at their house and we went the next day. I obviously agreed to it, but I think the reason I agreed to it was because of that mindset that it was like an extracurricular activity and it'd be fun. As far as I'm aware, I didn't say anything bad about it um, while we were there, um, which I honestly attribute to being enthralled and confused as fuck by it. Because I do remember, and my mom remembers, um, when I came home, I was like, what the hell? People actually believe this. I thought it was like a silly little extracurricular thing. Obviously, I didn't say it like that because I was eight, but you get the point. And my mom's response was basically, yeah, I agree, uh, but let's not say that to a friend's name. And that was literally how I learned religion existed. Like, I did not think it was a thing, which is also something I talked about in uh, my VeggieTales video, where I didn't know that VeggieTales was Christian because I had never heard Bible stories. The only place I had ever heard Bible stories was VeggieTales. Um, and initially, you know, thinking about it, I think... I, I always say I kind of thought of it as a fictional religion, like that it was like an in-universe religion, but realistically, I don't think I even thought it was a religion because I didn't know what a religion was. And that sounds bad and like I would be uneducated on it, but I'm actually glad that like I didn't know people believed in God because I didn't see it as something that some people consider real. Like I never gave it that unwarranted benefit of the doubt that it's just like what they believe. I just didn't know anything about it. And when I would talk to my mom about it as a kid, she didn't force her own views on it on me. She was just like, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, I personally don't love it, but, you know, don't say that to people. But ultimately, this culminated in um, another experience that I actually don't remember myself. Whenever I brought up the eight-year-old thing, uh, my mom brought up this because she thought I would remember it, and I don't. Um, whenever I was a kid, so obviously, like, if you've watched my channel, you know I am female to male transgender. So I was in Girl Scouts as a kid uh, in elementary school. I think until fifth or sixth grade. Don't quote me on the year. I think it was around then when I stopped. But uh, apparently we, we had, a, I do remember the pool party. I just don't remember this conversation. Uh, but we had a pool party and apparently one of the girls in my Girl Scout troop uh, went and grabbed like a snack and she prayed before she ate it. And um, keep in mind, I was a much uh, higher support needs autistic kid than I am as a medium support needs uh, adult. And I've always just been as blunt as I am now. Like, I don't, I, basically, I didn't have a filter. Um, so I just am sitting, like, eating with this girl. And I just straight up tell her it's stupid. Um, I'm like, why are, what is the point of that? Like, just eat your fucking chips? Like, why are we wasting time doing this? And why do I have to hear it? Stop. That's annoying and it doesn't do anything. Stop. <laughs> and I don't remember what this girl said because I don't even remember saying this. But apparently she told her mom, uh, who told my mom, who apparently was reluctant to even get mad at me for it because she was like, well, he's kind of right, but he probably shouldn't say that. Um, so ultimately, I think she ended up saying something along the lines of like, hey, um, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but maybe keep that to yourself or at home because a lot of people don't like when you say things like that because they take it a lot more seriously than you do. Like, I know you think it's a stupid little thing, but they take it seriously. So don't do that. Please stop causing problems. <laughs> And I mean, I had a lot of experiences like this um, pretty much up until I was a teenager. Um, 
which I do think is definitely an experience that's maybe a grew up irreligious and was autistic thing. Because part of the thing was that I, I had absolutely no filter or concept of what was okay to say and what wasn't, because my brother, who grew up in the same environment, um, did not say things like that, which I think is also attributed to the fact that as a kid, he was really, really shy. But nonetheless, um, obviously there's a personality and autism component there, but the point of those stories is that I did not see religion as anything other than some of my friends uh, like chocolate ice cream, or some of my friends like this starter Pokemon, or whatever. And I could tell them, it's stupid that you think water-type starters are better than fire-type starters, and we would get in a stupid little bicker about it, but it ultimately never mattered. And that's how I saw it. I saw it as a stupid little thing that I had feelings about, that I disagreed with them, and we were kids, and we could bicker about it the same way that we bickered about Pokemon, or ice cream, or where to go out to eat. Um, and obviously that is not how people see religion. Um, and to this day, that's still kind of my take on how religion should be talked about. And I've said that in videos. I mean, that's a sentiment that I still hold today. Um, I think I was right to feel that way. Um, that maybe I was wrong that they also felt that way, but that you should be able to criticize and discuss religion just like any other topic. Um, I do not think it should have the weight that it does in conversation where it is so, like often just off limits, taboo, you can't do it. Um, and obviously that perspective has grown as an adult because, you know, as a kid, I was like, well, no, it's stupid that you care that much. So I'm going to talk about it anyway. And, you know, now I'm like, there's a time and a place and a way to do it. Um, and some people that you just need to not, but fundamentally I stand by, um, those things I said as a kid, I just wish I had said them differently. But, you know, I was an elementary schooler. I don't really think I had the nuance to have a religious debate because ultimately I didn't even understand it. I just thought it was stupid. But the whole point of those stories and my perspective on them is that I had a really neutral view of religion growing up. Um, while a lot of ex-religious people may have personal or emotional investments in it. And again, reiterating the disclaimer at the beginning, this is not to say that I have a better perspective, it's just to say I have a different perspective. Um, but obviously, and understandably, a lot of ex-religious people have some kind of personal investment in that, whether it is um, someone who left the religion because they no longer believed it but had good experiences and is sympathetic towards religion, or someone who has religious trauma and is bitter um, and has that personal kind of, again, justified vendetta against that belief system. But ultimately, there's some level of personal experience and emotion tied up in that view. And again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just a different thing. Um, but I think as someone who's been able to kind of always been like looking from the outside in on it, I've never been religious. I have only ever gone to church to support friends with them being fully aware that, no, I am not going because you can convert me. I'm going because you're my friend and it's important to you. <laughs> But I've always had that, like, outside looking in. Like, I'm looking at it without being a part of it. And, you know, usually people say that as a bad thing, like they're left out. But I appreciate that perspective because, well, I may have personal biases um, and personal emotions cut up in it now as an adult who is openly LGBT or who is now more heavily invested in politics and realizing how intertwined they are that maybe now I have that. For the vast majority of my life, I did not have that emotional investment. Um, even whenever people were homophobic or transphobic to me, I didn't know enough about religion to even assign that to religion. I assigned it to conservative, te like Texas is conservative. Um, and obviously, I can see a more nuanced take on that now, but you know, like as a 16 year old. And I think this whole thing is part of the reason I'm an anti theist because. I don't have that experience where a lot of religious people or ex-religious people even will be like, religion ha is harmful because X, Y, Z, but it has its good parts. Like, I experienced this thing that was nice, or like community or a sense of purpose or whatever. But my thing with that is that particularly the ex-religious people who aren't bitter um, have this idea that religion may not be true or religion may have harmful aspects, but there's still some good in it. And personally, I don't think that there is a single trait of religion that is exclusive to it that's good. I'm not saying there's no good traits. I'm saying there is nothing good about religion that you cannot achieve equally as easily, if not better, secularly. A lot of atheists who argue otherwise are ex-religious people because they had those good experiences and are like, well, yeah, but I may have hated my religion or I may have enjoyed my religion, but I don't believe it in it anymore, but XYZ was nice.
But as a person who's never been religious, I have experienced those things just as strongly and just as meaningfully as someone who has been religious. And I don't have that kind of manufactured attachment to religious concepts. I have no personal investment in them sticking around. I have no personal investment in any of the good things that people experience through them. I have, like, a lot of, for example, a lot of ex-religious people be like, well, you can absolutely find purpose being an atheist. Like, I'm an atheist and I have purpose. But, you know, there's a lot of people who are still in my church who, like, that's their only sense of purpose. Like, that's, like, their whole thing. And I don't think it's fair to take that away from them. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should take it away from them. I'm just saying, like, conceptually. But why are those people any different than the people who left the religion and were able to find purpose? Or me, who's never been religious. And, you know, it may sound a little trivial to those religious people. But my pets are my main sense of purpose. Like, I'm being dead serious. Like, a thing that has stopped me from killing myself is the fact that if I die, I live alone. There will be no one to come grab my pets. They will die. So I can't kill myself because they need me to stay alive. And, you know, that sounds trivial compared to some greater, like, God made me. I'm going through this because God said so, whatever the fuck it is. But it doesn't matter, because it's a genuinely good reason to me. It is something that has genuinely stopped me from harming myself, and it's something that genuinely brings me joy and makes my day meaningful and makes me happy. So who is it to say that that is not just as good of a reason? And that those religious people who may feel like a lot of people feel like they need that, why can't they have what what I'm experiencing. Like, that's not to say it's not hard or a transition or that literally everyone is capable of it. But like, if every fucking person who ends up being atheist ends up being able to find some sense of meaning, why are these people like, why do they get to be shielded from that? Like, why are they allowed to bring the harmful baggage for something that they could achieve just as easy secularly? I don't personally have that emotional investment in it, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Like, I'm not saying my lack of experience with that is a good thing. I think that ex-religious people can provide a personal experience and um, just like a knowledge on these topics that is something that I will never be able to understand. I will never be able to understand religious trauma. So I can argue and defend against cults and religions that cause religious trauma, but ultimately I am never going to be able to speak for an XJW on what that experience is like. I am never going to be able to speak for my dad as an ex fundy what that experience is like. And while I'm absolutely grateful that I don't have to have those experiences, I do think like that is an area where it's a double-edged sword. I have that neutral perspective where I don't have any emotion tied up in it. I don't have a personal uh, bias against it, but it's also not great because I will never understand that experience and therefore I can never use that impartial perspective to actually speak for those people's experiences because I never experienced it. So I guess to wrap this up, like the point is basically, I think um, atheists who grew up atheist definitely uh, deserve more representation on YouTube and other platforms. So if you're someone like me who grew up like irreligious and has been considering making an atheist channel, I'm begging you to do it. Comment if you make a video because I will absolutely subscribe to you and shout you out and stuff. Um, because while our perspective may be different um, and helpful in some ways and not in others, um, I definitely think it's a perspective that needs more representation because it is a very, very different experience. As well as the fact that I think that people like myself who never experienced that religious trauma, while we have our own unique perspective to give, also need to step back and allow those who did experience that religious trauma to be the main voices against those experiences and that people like myself should take it upon themselves to prop up these people, whether they're bigger or smaller than us. Because while our unique experience may give us an upper hand in some areas, it is also a deficit in others. And ultimately, growing up irreligious is something I'm super grateful for, and it's not something a lot of people in America um, are privileged enough to experience. And I think... Um, Maybe this is a bit of a stretch, but I think it's a major reason that I am the kind of person I am. I would be a completely different person if my dad had stayed a fundamentalist. Um, I would not be interested in the plethora of I keep changing what I want to do, but something medical or scientific. I would not have this channel, which is very important to me. And while I think just being blunt and outspoken is 
probably like ingrained in who I am. Um, I think I would probably be using that for something a lot less pleasant uh, had I grown up in a different way. So yeah, that's it. I guess I just wanted to give some perspective uh, on a type of atheist that isn't really um, <laughs> as talked about or present, and maybe that's for good reason or not, but either way, here I am. Uh, thank you for watching. Also, before I go, thank you so much for 1K. Um, it means the absolute world to me. You guys have no idea how much uh, I appreciate that and how happy that made me. So before I go, I just want to give a massive, massive, massive thanks to that. So uh, on that note, uh, thanks for watching. Hadeh.